Hi and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about uh, Microsoft's Planner and how it integrates into um, both Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Outlook. Um, so, let, so let's get started. Um, to start with, we'll assume that you have a pretty good knowledge on um, the structure of Microsoft Teams with the navigation or the main navigation bar down the left um, with your Teams and Channels in this section here and then your main portal window um, over on the right which takes up the majority of the screen. Um, you will also need to have access to your Office 365 um, apps online so you'll need to go to uh, Microsoft uh, sorry office.com um, and have access to the planner app there um, and also have access to your Outlook calendar. Um, to start with, we're going to start inside Microsoft Teams, as this will be where you want to do the majority of your work. Um, so once you have a team set up and a channel, um, and you're ready to integrate uh, a Microsoft plan from a uh, planner into it, you want to head over to that channel and hit the plus icon at the very top of the screen. Once you do this, you'll have a list of the various applications that you can add to Microsoft Teams. Um, try to find Planner from the list. If not, you can use the search function just at the top. Um, so we'll find Planner, give that a click, and then you're presented with um, two options, create a new plan or use an existing plan from this team. Um, and then you can have the option to post about the uh, new tab creation in the posts section of the team. Um, for me personally, I just remove that. I don't use that one myself. Um, I've already got a team created, but if you do not, you could just create a, a new plan here and you could call it um, Supply Chain Team. Um, however, I already have a plan um, that I've preset up called Supply Chain Planner. So I'm going to give that a click. And then um, once you're happy, um, I won't post it there. Uh, I'll click Save. This then creates a new tab just at the top of your screen called uh, Supply Chain Planner or the name of the uh, plan that you've just created. Um, for those who are not familiar, um, within the um, main section here of the plan, you have three options on the left hand side. First is the board. The board contains all of the buckets and the tasks um, within the plan. Um, so for this example, I have actually created um, four buckets and a example test um, task. The next one, the charts option, shows you the progress of the uh, of the tasks that you've created. Um, so the status, um, not started, in progress, late, completed. Um, the buckets, so bucket one, two, three, and four. And what this does is it shows you a breakdown of, by bucket, what ones have not been started, what tasks are in progress, which tasks are late. Um, it won't show you completed. Um, and then the priority, so you can have the, have them as urgent tasks, important tasks, low uh, and medium. Um, and the good thing about this little section is it lets you see your important tasks that haven't been started or your urgent tasks that haven't been started. Um, so you can manage um, your team accordingly. And then down at the bottom here, you have tasks by team member and you can see um, which tasks are started in progress late etc. Um, you also have the ability on the right hand side here to drill that down by bucket so you can actually see the tasks that sit inside each one and who they're assigned to. You can click them and it also opens up the, the um, task card. The last section on the left at the top here is the schedule and the schedule basically lets you um, view your tasks in a calendar uh, method. Um, so, for example, the task that we have created runs for the entirety of next week um, and you can see it just here. Now, this screen, the schedule screen, is um, a little bit tricky. Um, so it doesn't necessarily show you a lot of the tasks because there's a lot of um, information potentially presented on that one screen. Um, so I find it a little bit too tricky to use and I tend to use Outlook um, for the calendar view myself. 
Um, right, so if we go back to the board, um, you obviously have the four buckets that I've created. Um, and what we can do is we can delete them. Um, we can move them in different orders uh, as we see fit. We can create new ones. Um, so we can just call it bucket four. Um, and you can just keep adding them uh, as many as you need. Uh, personally, I like four for my screen size because that lets me see those four buckets. Um, but you may wish to add more, um, it's however you, you want to structure out your plan. Um, in another video, I'll probably talk about it in a lot more detail of how you can use the uh, Microsoft's um, Power Automate or the uh, former Flow. Um, to actually turn your buckets into a business process. So, you, for example, you could have something from um, bucket one could be source products, bucket two could be um, list products on um, operating system, and bucket three could be place the order, and then bucket four could be receive stock, right? And you, each um, task or each bucket um, would potentially fall to a different department and therefore different staff members or team members might want to do each one. Um, with Power Automate and, Power, uh, and Microsoft Flow, you could um, have it automatically move the tasks across that business flow um, as uh, each task is completed by one employee, it can move over to another one, right? Another colleague can take it from there. Um, and I'll probably talk about that in more depth uh, in another video. For this video, we're mainly talking about how to integrate Planner into Microsoft Teams um, and how to then um, integrate the tasks that you create into um, Microsoft Outlook. So once you're happy with the buckets that you've created, um, you can create tasks. Um, so we can create a task in bucket two, for example, and we'll call this a test task. Um, we can set a due date. Um, so this due date will be um, Tuesday. And um, again, I'll assign it to myself. Okay, um, once that is done, um, simply add the task. And there it is. Now, by default, there is a limited amount of information that you can add to that task um, just by clicking add task here. So once you've added that basic level information, you click the task to open up the wider card. Um, and then from in here, you have various different options. So to start with, you can add it to multiple people uh, or different people, uh, if you've incorrectly added someone. Um, you can change the bucket. Um, so if we wanted it in bucket three, instead of bucket two, we could do that. We can um, say that it's already in progress. We can say it's urgent. Um, we can also give it a start date, not just a due date. So we can say start it on Monday, finish it on Tuesday. And we can add some notes. Um, so we can say this is urgent. Um, please complete um, ASAP. Now, this option lets you add um, this note into the actual card itself. Um, which I can't show you from here uh, and we can not show that on card. Um, this section here allows us to add a checklist like this one, right? So um, our task name is the main task and then we can have a sub set of tasks that need to be completed in order for the main task to actually be complete. Um, in order to do that, we just click into a, a checklist and we say um, sub task one, sub task two. And this is the one that I prefer to show on card, um, just like that. And you have various options you can delete or you can reorder um, the tasks accordingly. I think I just hit delete by mistake. So we'll just go sub task two and press enter. Now this section allows us to add attachments to this task. So if um, the task relates to placing an order for um, a purchase order, then you could attach the purchase order here 
and instruct people to order what's in the attachment. Um, so you'd click here and you get two options. You get the ability to link um, to a document. So if you have a file in a um, shared drive or a NAS drive or something like that locally on your um, work network, you could use that. Um, I wouldn't advise that, however, because um, with uh, Microsoft Teams being a 365 application, uh, you can access it from anywhere in the world with an internet connection on any device. If you have a file locally on a NAS drive um, that requires VPN access, then you have to always be on that VPN at, um, network in order to access the file from the attachment. So instead, I would advise everyone to kind of move any key files that relate to Teams um, into the SharePoint. So you can click the SharePoint link, for example. Um, now, the other part of this that's really important to just note is that um, you can only attach documents that fall within the team that you've actually added the planner. So um, within this file section here, within um, the team supply chain and the channel general, um, those files you can add into other tasks. You couldn't add a task from a different team um, because that would be into a different file structure within SharePoint. Um, so it's this important note, make sure you've uploaded the files into the correct team if you would like to attach those into the um, tasks themselves. There is one exception to that and it goes back to um, Power Automate. You can create um, tasks for plans um, and attach uh, documents separately. Um, but again, I'll probably cover that in a different video. Okay, so that's how you'd attach um, files. And then lastly, you have comments here at the bottom. Um, and the, the main function I see for comments is about trying to create an audit trail for how this task is performing. Um, or how you're progressing through this task. So if you had a delay um, on uh, delay on getting information, then you might want to put that on there, send that in, um, and then that will appear at the bottom here, and that becomes a part of your audit trail to say, okay, someone who accesses this task within the team can say, okay, there's a delay on getting this information, um, and therefore that is why it hasn't happened yet, um, and so forth. So it kind of gets um, more communication flowing um, across the team so everyone knows what's actually happening. Um, without that function there, you might be left to put the information into your notes, but then your notes section becomes really long-winded. It's just quite nice to have a bit of an audit trail at the bottom of the task. Um, so once you're happy with it, um, you can then look at the labels on the right hand side here. Now, by default, you have a color coded system um, and you can just click into them and rename them accordingly. Um, so I might say that one there is a supply chain um, function and then I'll give it a tick. Um, I don't need that. Turn that one off. I just want the yellow um, supply chain. Um, and then I can close it. And now our task looks like this. Um, so let me just delete that one because I accidentally made that a task. Um, right, so here we can see straight away um, that this task relates to buying and merchandising and this task relates to supply chain. Quick, quick visual. Um, but within our charts, we also get a breakdown um, by if I change this to labels we can now see the tasks by buying by merchandising by supply chain we can see in here what's not started what has been started uh, what buckets they relate to if it's urgent if it's important low high priority etc within our um, schedule we can see there's now two tasks and in our board here um, because I have this sorted by labels um, rather than bucket it would look like that um, it's actually a really important function so you can't set this by default to um, your preference unfortunately at least not yet um, so by default it always puts it into bucket 
However, um, what I find the most useful is due date. So this allows us to then see all the various things that are due and when they are due by. Um, so it could be these tasks are late, these are due today, these are due tomorrow, these are ones for the remainder of the week, this is next week, and then this is the future, right? Um, and it's quite a nice, neat way of actually seeing what's happening within your team. Okay, so we're just going to put that back to bucket. You can also look at it assigned to, by progress, by labels, by priority. Um, but I personally generally flick between bucket and due date. Um, progress uh, generally isn't as important because due date kind of covers off the progress levels anyway because you're always going to be chasing what needs to be happening uh, now rather than um, future stuff so um, there's your buckets now the next step is to then take this plan and integrate it into Microsoft Outlook um, and to do that you first have to head over to office.com go to your Office 365 applications and find Planner. Um, click Planner, um, let that load up and this will show you all the various plans that you have um, going on and, and so forth. So I've got uh, barbecues, Christmas clothing, garden furniture. I even have a, a plan for holidays um, that lets me um, use Microsoft Forms to create um, tasks in Planner and then I integrate the holidays um, planner into Microsoft Outlook. Um, so really useful way of using Microsoft Planner. Um, you can, it, because it integrates with everything else, um, you can um, basically create a form that uh, allows an employee or a, a staff member to um, request a holiday. Um, that can then go through Microsoft Flow um, from Microsoft Flow, you can approve or reject that holiday. If you approve it, you can create a planner task and then the planner task integrates into Outlook. Um, so it's a nice, neat way to automate the entire holiday um, request process. Um, so in order to get a plan into Outlook, first of all, you have to navigate over to it. So we're going to click on the supply chain planner and you can see the tasks that we've created in Microsoft Teams um, are fully synchronized into the Microsoft Planner um, app online. Um, it works in exactly the same way except there's a few additional um, extra parts to it that you do not have from um, Microsoft Teams um, but we're only really going to be talking about this little section here. Um, so navigate to the plan that you've created um, across the top here click on the ellipsis and then at the very bottom add plan to Outlook calendar. Now from here click on publish and then copy the entire link and then just close that. Now head over to Microsoft um, Outlook um, go to the calendar section and then over here at the top, add calendar. From the drop down menu, select from internet and then paste the URL into there. Click OK and your calendar has now been integrated. Um, now, a nice little trick and tip um, for Outlook here is this view is quite difficult right so it shrinks down all the information you can barely see what's happening um, if you hit this little arrow here what it'll do is it'll add um, or it combines all of your calendars together into an overlay mode which means you get one continuous calendar with all the tasks integrated directly in to your calendar in essence so in this example I have my main calendar here I have the clothing calendar, which is the green one, and now I uh, have our supply chain calendar. Now you can see the two tasks that we've created just here and here. Um, now if we head over to Teams again, and let's say we've made a mistake and we want to change the name of um, this task here to testing Outlook, 
um, and then I close that. So we've changed the name or we've changed some other details of the task, right? Um, if we head back over to Outlook, we notice that it hasn't changed yet. So what you do in this scenario is hit the little um, refresh button, top left hand side of Outlook, which is the send, receive all folders or F9 shortcut. Give that a click and it will go ahead and pull back all of the latest information related to all of your calendars, um, all of your emails, absolutely everything. Um, so now we've pulled back the amended task um, that we can see is happening on Monday and Tuesday. Um, and if we head back into Microsoft Teams, um, you can see that nothing has changed here. We still have our buckets, we have our um, charts and graphs. Uh, we also have the calendar here. Um, and that's it guys, that's how um, you start a um, Microsoft Planner plan, um, how you integrate that plan into Microsoft Teams, and how you integrate the tasks created into your Outlook calendar. Um, I hope you guys found this video useful, um, if you did please hit the like button and um, consider subscribing for future videos um, where I will be talking about um, Microsoft's Power Automate and how we can evolve um, Microsoft Planner to become a more automated system.